Now, if I look at a lot of British obituaries, it seems to me they often have a different structure. And you can tell me in a moment what you think that difference is. But often I see the death buried in the middle of the, the British obituary. There's maybe a greater tendency to poke fun at the person who has passed away. And often the obituary won't be printed, say, several weeks later, which is not, say, how the New York Times typically operates. Now, what do you think are the differences between British and American obituaries, and how have they evolved? What accounts for that? Well, that's a huge question, and because I'm not a historian of journalism, I can't account for how it's evolved. Um, that's beyond my ken. British obituaries, and British journalism generally, it's that Fleet Street model, are more catty than uh, news stories in almost any section of an American paper. Again, we have to have complete fealty to the truth. We have to have complete impartiality. We have to be disinterested in the pure sense of the term where we are detached observers. And an obit is no different. But at the same time, because we have wonderful marquee name writers in our section, Biff Grimes, Bruce Weber, Sam Roberts. Marguerite we, Fox. Thank you. <laughs> we are able to put a really interesting gloss, gloss in perhaps both senses of the term, on top of this basic structure that has to be there. 